students from classrooms all over the Santa Maria Bonita School District participated in a nationwide initiative for children to learn how to code. The Hour of Code, that took place two weeks ago, goes along with not only an increased desire to use technology in the classroom, but actually get it into students' hands. We sat down with teachers, students, and administrators to get a better understanding of how technology is not just changing, but enhancing our classrooms. And this is actually their second day of doing coding. Most kids don't do it until third grade, and I'm not sure that they did it last year, but this is their first time doing it. However, it's just so intuitive that they pick it up right away. It makes sense. And before we start, we do a little activity where we have kids in front of the class, and we have to tell them how to get to the back of the room, and they see that you have to go step by step by step. You can't just say, walk to the back. You have to say, walk forward six steps, turn right, and then when they go to coding, they can see that that's what they're doing. They're telling the computer exactly what to do. They're, they really, really like it. That's a high interest with um, some of the choices that they have. Um, uh, Minecraft is a huge interest for these kids because they're used to that game. They play it at home. Sure. And then there's uh, Moana, which is the Disney movie. There's also a high interest. Last year they had Frozen. So it, it, it hooks them in by something they're familiar with. Um, and then they see how it actually works, how they can make the characters move, how they can go forward and throw the, throw the net for the fish and things like that. And it, it kind of unlocks computers for them. Unlocking computers for Santa Maria Bonita students is becoming easier because of an increased prevalence of technology, not just in the schools, but in the classrooms themselves. The district is currently at a near one-to-one -one ratio of laptops and tablets for students. Brian Rickey, Information Technology Supervisor for the district, explains how this was made possible. Our school district currently has over 14,000 Chromebooks um, and about um, 3,000 plus iPads. And iPads are typically used uh, in kinder and first grade, uh, though sometimes uh, they'll be put in a, in a set to go do some more kind of hands-on things because there's some unique things about iPads that are really great for creation. Um, and, and that creation uh, word is a big, you know, emphasis lately is um, as we're kind of evolving through this with everyone else, you know, if, you know, your first couple of years is just kind of discovery and hands-on and, and getting familiar with the terminology and what's possible, but really quickly we want to get into creation because uh, that's where it's at. Um, we learn by doing, um, and that's no different than like hands and paint, learning by doing that way, um, or learning by carrying actual objects. Um, but then when we get into um, technology, you know, we learn by doing. Um, and, and so it, it's exciting to see all the different ways our teachers are trying to explore into this whole new territory. One of the biggest efforts in getting students to use the available technology is the Week of Code events, in which students from all over the district try their hand at learning the language of computers. We asked Jessica Rivera, second grade teacher at Taylor School, what her students' experiences have been. Just, they love coming to the computer lab. Um, uh, they, have, of course, love the fact that there's Minecraft and there's Moana and there's Frozen, you know, and so they like all of those things. Um, but the most important thing is that they, they feel like they are creating. They are creating, they, they are doing something that they have control. Um, so that is, that is very good for them. But it isn't just the younger kids that are having a go at tech. District-wide, students of all ages are being exposed to code, computer development, and learning how to understand the world around us that is becoming increasingly technology dependent. We were uh, asked by several colleagues uh, in the district to uh, to learn more about coding, and uh, so uh, I took on that challenge to do so. And uh, uh, it, the way that our school, uh, that my classroom set up, with the uh, all my students have Chromebooks, so it makes it really easy for, for them to uh, use the programs uh, correctly. And that and uh, so we were just excited to, to have this opportunity and that the school district has allowed us to, to do this. And that is what has made this effort a little different. It is teacher run. Teachers are helping teachers learn the technology and encouraging its use in the classroom. Because as Brian Ricky explains, they're the ones best positioned to implement technology in the classroom. We've put a lot of our professional development efforts behind uh, our teachers. So where in the past our professional development was always centered out of the district, what we've added uh, a really nice layer is, is this group of teachers called lead learners. And um, Sarah's one of them. Um, and so there are different groups. So we have like math lead learners and language arts lead learners and technology lead learners and science and history lead learners. But the idea is these are the folks that are in the classroom. Right? And, and they're the ones that really understand the complexity of it all, day in and day out, 
um, of what it means to, to to deal with 30 different little human beings with 30 different little needs, you know? Um, and so, um, yeah, we absolutely love working with them um, because, you know, they're directly involved with their staff and they understand, you know, exactly where their staff at and who needs additional time, right? Um, and who's ready to go and what their interests might be, right? So they're, you know, and there's more of them, you know? <laughs> and so too, right, there's only a few of us here um, in these efforts, um, you know, but we have a team of like, oh, I think we're at about 25 or so. Mm -hmm. So rather than just me and a technology TOSA, um, you know, we get to work with this team of in individuals um, and we meet like on a monthly basis. Um, they share what's going on, which is really cool because teachers don't get to share too often. Um, you know, um, while they work as teams, um, the majority of their day, you know, is in their classroom working with these uh, with these students, and they go home and lesson plans and all that stuff, and they come back and they do it again. Um, and there there aren't enough opportunities for them to share with each other. So one of the nice things of this lead learner group is they get to share, and it could be little things, little tiny inspiring things. Um, or little lessons on not to close the lid all the way only closes right. to here. That's gold. Yeah. Like those little things are absolutely gold. And and that's what's really fun, like from my perspective, is when I get the opportunity to go out to the classroom and just sit and watch and go, Oh, that is so smart. That is so smart what that teacher just did. And it's really great when you see the teachers who got all the tools with the technology and you see them like skipping around from we're gonna do whiteboard work here and now we're gonna do we're gonna do pairing group work now. And they're having the students um, do strategies where it's really forcing them to talk with each other, um, to make eye contact, and all these person, you know, personality and personal skills you need to have too. And they're just weaving in and out of this stuff, and it's amazing to watch. And and that's where you're just like, wow, that's super impressive. <laughs> One thing that Ricky pointed out is that while kids are learning a lot of different things through technology, it is important to use it for specific reasons and that overall screen time needs to be managed. It's, it's a real balance, and, um, but I, I think teachers natively know that. I don't think that's something you even have to say. Um, if anything, they're more concerned about um, you know, um, too much screen time. They're going to protect in the opposite direction. You know? um, and, and so you know, we've just got to help find a balance there. Um, but their, their natural instincts for what students need are typically right. We do a lot of technology in here, we do presentations, we do the news. Um, this is something they're going to do um, every week. Sure. So that they, and there's um, different websites, there's one called Scratch, which they actually cre create their own movies and things like that, or animations, you know, things like that. So first they learn the basics and then they go from there. And while the students can enjoy an increased usage of computers, tablets, and technology, it is important to remember and learn the most important rule. Someone is always watching. So now I can basically see how they actually they can go inside. It has a door right here, a chest, two beds. I mean, it has everything there. Because I actually have the, the ability to look at them, uh -huh. um, I could actually... Uh, either block them, either I see that uh, the, their activity is not being the purpose of the activity to do. Yeah. So, um, so this way, I could see all the students here. So if I see Joe over here not doing what he's supposed to be, I could all go over there and tell, or just go ahead and and block his his uh, account so that he's not able to move. <laughs> Understanding that the ubiquitous nature of technology and the need to ensure that our students can compete in a global economy is the impetus for the drive for computers in the classroom. We wanted to know how all of this is being funded. The desire to have and use technology does not put it in students' hands. So, how is it paid for? So, um, different districts fund technology different ways. Sure. Um, our approach has always been let it be a site decision because um, it's the site that knows when they're ready to go. It's that group of teachers. It's that administrator or principal looking them in the eyes and going, are we ready to do this, right? Whatever those big decisions are. Technology investments are a big decision. Um, and so, um, you know, the first um, group of Chromebooks that we had that were, you know, in a classroom was from a teacher who raised his hand and said, I'm, I'm ready. And he had that conversation and talked to the district and said, like, can we do this? He said, we'd love to do this. Like, this would work really well for us. Um, and so from that um, learning experience, um, you know, things started blossoming and happening pretty quick. One of the big, like, legislator-type actions that took place was um, online testing. 
um, and, and there were some funds that came along with that. And so all districts got to benefit from those fundings. And then depending on where districts were, some of that funding had to go a lot into infrastructure because that's a big piece of making this all work. Sure. Um, others went to student devices. We were fortunate that we had already done a, a recent upgrade with our infrastructure, so it was ready. We, we kind of knew something was coming. We didn't know exactly what it was, but we knew it was coming. Um, and we didn't know where the funding was going to come from yet for the student devices, but then that law came around, that funding uh, came with it, and that allowed us to do like our first big purchase. So like with that purchase, and that was about three years ago, it was about 2013, um, we, we spent about a million dollars purchasing about $3,000, or excuse me, 300000 wait, back that up, <laughs> take three, 3,000 Chromebooks. So $1 million yeah. for 3,000 Chromebooks. Or so, yeah. That's cards and printers and all the stuff that goes with sure. it, a little bit of software. Um, so, so that was the first big buy. And what that really was was getting us ready for online testing, right? Because okay. it had been made clear where this online testing that we all used to know as, you know, the bubble lamps, right. it's gone. And this is what's coming. Um, and the online testing was the application of implementation of Common Core yeah, standards. That absolutely. Stuff. All was all tied in together. Um, and so, like, we, you know, here we, we, we called it, um, like, the Trojan Pinata. Because, like, yes, it's here, like, for, for testing, and we're going to do testing, and we're going to make sure our students are ready, but testing is just a few weeks during the year, right? We're going to use these things for instruction all year long. Mm. So awesome that we got this money to be able to make sure we can do testing, but how are we going to use these all year long to uh, improve student achievement? Um, and so, you know, from that opportunity, um, to see what that really looks like now instructionally, um, more teachers are raising their hand and have raised their hand and said, we're ready, we're ready, right? Um, and then, of course, behind that, a lot of professional development has had to come around to kind of support that because um, people are ready at different times. You know, um, at this point, we're committed to make sure that every student has a classroom that has technology infused in it. So, knowing now what is being used, how it is being used, and how it is being paid for, we just need to ask, how is it working? It's brought a different interest level into the into the classroom. Uh, the kids are coming more engaged. They 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 get to use something that they that they haven't got to use on a daily basis. Or maybe you know, some of these students don't have Chromebooks at home or computers. They don't have the internet at home. So when they come here, it's 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 what they want to do when they you know when, when, uh, and what they want to use. So it's just it's just a, it's it's just that excitement and, uh, and it's also just a it's another learning tool that makes it makes learning easier for them. And it really helps me too with uh, progress monitoring, so I'm able to uh, I'm able to look at data a lot easier. Uh, every day I sit at this kidney table right here, and, and I, I pull students who uh, need extra support based on the um, how they're how they're um, how, how they're um, doing in the um, a couple of the online learning programs that we have. So. Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's definitely a game changer, and it's uh, it's it's almost I'm able to look at data almost immediately and, and help correct that situation where you know in the past you know you actually have to grade the test and you have to you know go over the test and or then you know you have to create groups and with the Chromebooks uh, in the classroom and one to one um, all kids can be doing their own thing on, uh, at their own level and uh, getting support as needed from the teacher. Tell me what you're doing right now. I'm playing Scratch. What is that? It's, um, Scratch is like this game. It's like coding, but like you're making music. Like you can make music with these buttons. Is coding something that you've done while you've been in school, or is this your first class that you've done it in? My first class that I've done it in. What do you think about it so far? It's fun. It's yeah. really fun. How come? Well, it gives like you an education to like starting a game that somebody hasn't yes. invented yet. Or so you're like inventing it on your own. Yeah. How does that make you feel when you create something on your own? It makes me feel, um, it makes me feel happy. So how many of you have experience in coding? So all four of you, wow. So where have you done it before? Um, I've done it in my third grade classroom this hour. So third grade, so now it's sixth grade, right? So you haven't done it in three years. What about you? Where have you been? I've done it in fifth grade in Miss Kringle's class. What about you? I did it in fourth grade in Miss Mr. Segura's class. He did it in fifth grade in Miss Altman's class. So have you guys gone home and done it at home at home? I have. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are coding pros, huh? 
So tell me what it is that you like about coding. What I like about coding is that, um, where you get a, like you get to watch videos for how to first. So if you're a beginner, you get to learn how to use it first, and then you get a, It's like a little game that you get to play. For fun. What about you guys? I like coding because like on the Minecraft one, you have to build a house. So have you built your dream house on Minecraft? <laughs> <laughs> I like it because you, like what she said, like like you build your own house, and I feel like a lot of them. And I don't even know which one. I really want to make them again, but I like forgot how to. <laughs> so, how do you think coding helps you in school? Um, problem solving. What else? Is it teaching you anything else, like about math? Uh, it's teaching us how to build stuff. So, is that something that you see yourself doing in the future? Maybe is coding? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it could help you, like, with if you want to be an engineer, it could help you build stuff. Is that what you want to do? I do. You want to be an engineer? So tell me how this coding is helping you get there. Uh, because you you have to use the, um, the technology that they and the stuff that you move your like you build stuff and you also do it when you're an engineer. Okay. So tell me why you think they're doing this at your school this hour of code. Have you talked to any other of your friends in other classes? Are they doing it too? I think they're doing it here because they're trying to, um, to some kids, I guess, they want to be an engineer when they grow up, so maybe that's why they're doing it here. I think they're doing it here because it could help with their future jobs. Well, what do you think about the fact that everybody in the country this week is doing the Hour of Code? It kind of puts it on a bigger thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how, what's that like to know that students in Missouri and Kentucky are doing this too? Mm, it'll make me want to do it more because they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to like inspire me. Because it kind of makes it competitive, right? Yeah, no, it'll yeah. probably change your life once you get older. Exactly. So how do you think it'll change your life? Uh, by keep doing it more and like every single day. For more information on education in Santa Maria, follow Krista Chandler on Twitter at Krista's Beat or read her work in the Santa Maria Times and online at santamariatimes.com.